A month ago, um, I did a video on this centipede board, and maybe it was a month and a half ago. It's been a while um, that I bought. I bought the centipede board on eBay, and it uh, was untested, as I recall. And of course, it didn't work. And I rep uh, repaired traces and and replaced the transistor. I forget exactly what I did, but basically, I got this thing running. And as you can see, it still runs. But um, this is a revisit to this board. Um, at the time that I repaired it, I commented that somebody had put a single chip to replace all the program chips. And uh, so I wanted to see if I could make my own board to replace all this hard work. Um, someone had to go in and add jumpers to both sides of this thing and cut traces, I'm sure. So I'm going to undo all this work and uh, re repair any cut traces and install my board and see if I can if this will work um, assuming that they program this chip uh, with all the ROM codes in the proper sequential order um, it should plug right into my board um, and uh, I would I shouldn't have to reprogram or I shouldn't have to program an EEPROM I should be able to just plug that one in so um, let me get started on this and I'll get back all right so I thought I'd just comment on how um, this construction goes on these First thing, uh, when assembling these boards, you install 40 pin headers. Um, I'm sorry, 20, two 20 pin headers to make the 40 pin uh, header, if you will, for the 6502 uh, that it, so that it can plug into the 6502 slot socket. Um, so that's the first step. Second step will be to solder in the 40 pin uh, socket for the processor. And it's going to sit right next to um, the header that I just soldered in. And so it's going to go in like that, and I'll solder that in. Um, I'll solder in a couple more sockets, a uh, 20-pin socket and a 32-pin socket. Um, then there's some transistors and resistors, capacitors, things, uh, passive component type stuff that it gets soldered into. Um so that's it. But the, the important bit for this video is um, you solder in the header first um, and then you solder in the big socket. Those are the first two steps. Um, all right. <clears throat> so I have the headers installed and I have the large socket installed. Uh, what I said previously is fine. It works fine. Um, but it would be easier if this middle header is installed first. In other words, the one that goes in, in the center in between the two sets of pins for the 6502. Uh, the headers are indicated by uh, this white, this solid white bar. Okay, you see the solid white bar there? Those are the header rows. So um, you would install this header first, solder it. Then you would install the socket and solder it all the way up. Then install this header and solder it in. If you go in that order, it's going to be quite a bit easier. Otherwise, um, you're going to be soldering vertically on, to get these uh, joints in the center. And um, it's, it's doable, and I did fine. I didn't have any issues. It's just that it would be easier had I done um, the sequence of uh, inner header, socket, outer header. Well, um, I'm taking the working board apart, and... I didn't realize they had drilled holes in the board in a couple places and routed the wires up. You can see they soldered it onto the chips. So I'll have to unsolder all that and and reverse the jumpers and stuff. But um, I do want to try this without having to program an EEPROM. Uh, I don't even know where my EEPROM programmers haven't used it in a while. So let me uh, go ahead and just get a close-up of this in case I need to reverse it. But it looks like uh, blue wire goes to pin 2 and white wire goes to 20 or goes to pin 1, 27, and 28. 